Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm going to be reacting to Old Spider-Man PS1 by Cad Icarus. This was recommended to me by Christopher McBride. Uh, honestly, my favorite Spider-Man game, uh, I do got to say, is the, uh, the Spider-Man for the PS2, which, you know, follows the, uh, the Sam Raimi movies, uh, mostly because, <laughs> mostly because, uh, throughout the whole movie, the whole game, uh, Bruce Campbell's just, you know, narrating and all that. And, uh, of course, you know, because Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi, they're best friends. They've been working together ever since, even long before they did the Evil Dead, a Evil Dead franchise, you know, they go back so far that, uh, that Bruce Campbell actually used to babysit, uh, Sam Raimi's little brother, Ted Raimi, you know? Uh, yeah, like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, and of course, Tobey Maguire, like, to, he'll always be my Spider-Man. Like, when I saw No Way Home, like, yeah, like, I was excited when I saw Andrew Garfield, but oh my god, when I saw Tobey show up, like, my god, I cried. I legit cried real tears when he showed up. I was like, oh my god, that's, that's, my, that's my hero, man. Like, when he showed up, I was so happy. I freaking cried. And, like, uh, that part towards the end when you know green gap green when green goblin stabs him in the back like i just like felt like oh my god like my heart stopped i was like oh my god are they gonna kill toby i was like oh my god they i was like i was so pissed i was like oh my god better not i swear to god <laughs> but uh yeah like to me toby will always be my spider-man yeah and i think andrew garfield was great i think uh Tom Holland, I think he's really good. But to me, you know, the definitive Spider-Man will always be Toby. I mean, because mostly because I grew up with him. I was, I mean, I was 10 years old when, you know, the first Spider-Man movie came out. And since then, like, I had been a Spider- I had become a Spider-Man fan because of him, you know. Uh, but as for this game, <laughs> back to this game, uh, Spider-Man PS1. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never seen it, never played it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's see what, uh, Caddy thinks about it, you know? Probably might like it, probably might not, probably might, you know, like it, but it has some bugs with it, uh, who knows? And if, uh, you want to like, comment, subscribe to my channel, you can if you don't want to, that's fine too. Here we go. He spins a web, swings across the sky, and lands with a somersault onto the Daily Bugle building. Who is this masked hero? <gasps> it's you! <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, if only, huh? So, <laughs> so you think you could tell? <laughs> yeah, no, right. from hell. Yeah, I know, right? Man. Yeah, when I was, yeah. After I first, when I after when I saw the first Spider Man movie, man, I I legit wanted to be Spider Man. <laughs> I went. It didn't happen. Yeah, it was, I was just as bummed as Caddy. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanekura Show, where I always had to do deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And after the last episode, where I had to listen to a load of bored ramblings from a certain superhero... I must stop this evil from bringing about the end of all things. Get the shit out of here! <laughs> Let's take a look at a superhero who actually loves being a superhero. Most of the time. The one that's getting his 150th actual movie reboot series <laughs> started soon. Yeah, you need to look it up, it's true. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man. What can you say about Spider-Man that hasn't already been said? As a kid, yep. he was the only superhero I ever- Hang on a blankety blank. We have Postman Pat, Fireman Sam, Joe the Policeman, from the What's Going Down episode of That's My Mama. So why don't we have Spider-Man? You know, like Batman. Superman? Spider-Man? Sounds so wrong, doesn't it? It sounds absolutely awful. 
<laughs> and let's keep calling him that from now on and see how long you can last before you start screaming internally. So anyway, Spider-Man was my idol as a kid. I watched all the Sam Raimi movies and loved them. Watched the Me TV too. cartoons and loved them. And of course, played the games and I love them. The game I remember the most fondly from my childhood on the PS1 was actually Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro, but that would have been too easy a target for this show. So how about I play the original game that I have never played before up until this video? Yes, today we're covering the original Spider-Man, and you better brush up on your Spider-Man history because this game starts off with absolutely no introduction at all. I mean, it's refreshing to not cover another bloody origin story with the spider bite and Uncle Ben's death. <laughs> I know you love the egg fried rice <laughs> microwave packets, but I'm not a fan, so I'm taking them off the shelves forever. At the same time, though, it can be a lot to absorb. In the first five minutes, you get Octavius and Doc Ock, Eddie Brock and Venom, Peter Parker and Spider-Man, Black Cat, Jameson, the Spider-Man imposter stealing Octavius's work, and something that looks a lot like Carnage, but if you knew nothing about the universe, you would have to assume that would be Venom from earlier. I mean, if you're a fan, this whole intro sequence kicks ass and gears you up for an awesome Spider-Man adventure with tons of mystery and excitement. However, if you're a little bit rusty on the mythos, or this is your starting point... <laughs> It's pretty shit for not even establishing who characters are or what their purpose is. The game expects you to know absolutely everything about these characters, what they do, and their relationships to everyone at a specific point in the Spidey timeline. And this wouldn't be too bad if it were a sequel, but no, it's just called Spider-Man. So I think it's fair to assume there'd be some introductions or backstory before kicking off. The character viewer in the menu does give you tiny bits of info, but still nowhere near enough to have some idea on what's going on. And why does the henchman look like fucking Killer Croc? I don't know, but you've gotta love the groovy, energetic menu music. In fact, the whole soundtrack is pretty great. Tons of funky slap bass, distorted angry guitars in fights, and stealthy, gentle percussion and tense strings for the quieter moments. Never before has carrying a bomb unbearably slowly been so fucking funky! Man, it sounds like Flea. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. The PS1 game sounds exactly like a Spider-Man game should. Not only is the music great, but there's hundreds of dialogue cues, campy voice acting, and even Stan Lee as your narrator. But this is just the beginning, Spidey fans. So get ready for a true superhero action thriller. I want Stan Lee to be my grampy. And you know what? If you like a Spider-Man game on PS1, then you will be very happy with this. Obviously, as technology has increased, there isn't any real reason to go back to what is stiff and clunky in comparison, but at the time, this would have been the best damn Spidey game on the market. Saying that doesn't mean the game makes sense though because half the time it really fucking doesn't. I have shut the bank robber. Parker, shut up and dial 911. Shut up. He rang one of his photographers to tell them to ring the police. Did his parents drop him on his head when he was younger? Ugh. Judging by his face, I think that might have been the case. And then the mission following that cutscene is you <laughs> trying to get to the Daily Bugle to save JJ before Scorpion reaches him, but look, he, he's already right there. Why is this bar showing you how close he is to getting JJ? He's right there. Did Scorpion twist his ankle, get a coke from a vending machine, check his emails, fall out the building and had to climb back up, get second thoughts about killing JJ and so turns away and leaves but keeps on changing his mind? Why is this here? I also do love how JJ never lets go of the cigar in his mouth even when milliseconds away from death. That shit's funny. And Hey, maybe JJ was right not to call the police. Look at them. They're f f f fucking relentless. I know they're trying to chase who they think is a Spider-Man imposter. I'm really sorry. Saying Spider-Man is starting to annoy me now, so I'm going to stop it. But they're literally willing oh, to bomb and gettling gun down citizens in order to catch him. And don't give me the whole, they're only bombing abandoned buildings. Shit. Because there are clearly people living in these flats. Lights on and everything. These guys, you know what? They could do with a Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> also, whenever you web swing, what exactly is your web grabbing onto? Well, the air. I thought New York City air was pretty thick and dirty, but I didn't think you could hang from it. Aside from those things, though, the game looks the part as well as sound it. The character models for PS1 standards are pretty damn great and extremely detailed, sometimes utterly hellish, yes, but mostly really good. And a lot of time clearly went into the animations with each boss, enemy, and Spidey himself to make them feel like the characters they are as much as they look like them. And with the animations on Spidey, you get some awesomely fluent punching and kick combos, realistic climbing on surfaces, nice web swinging motion, and never before has climbing the side of a tiny part of a wall looked so adorable. It's really cool as well how there's a story reason for Spidey not being able to go down to street level. Not only a great excuse for not being able to have the PS1 render out every single city, street, and pedestrian, but that also means that all the detail and colourful comic book poppiness could be focused on the buildings you swing between, the shades of the sky, and inside the many buildings you explore. There's Marvel references everywhere, along with other franchise characters, adverts for other Activision games, and for basically just a load of industrial noise, the game doesn't look bad whatsoever. Also, touch. every chapter having its own comic book page is as cute as a button on a baboon. And strangely enough, similarly to how Peter Parker got his spider powers from being bitten by a super spider. I actually know- Oh god. Oh. Oh. Oh jeez. Oh my god, I'm burning up. Oh. Oh. What is this? Oh, I don't feel good. Oh. 
You're magnificent in bed. Why didn't you stay true to yourself, you super shaggy? It was him. It was super shaggy. He gave me his powers. He's changing me. Changing me into what? him. I should never have let him go in my bed. Oh! Ew. <sighs> what? My face. My hair. Oh, my God. Well, uh, you know what they say. With great power comes great responsibility. From this day forth, I shall be known as Super Shaggy. Oh, um, Venom? Are you, are you supposed to do something here? Well, you know, aside from pretending to be a good little school pupil to Spider-Man in one of the game's dumbest moments. Who could have wanted to steal Octavius' technology? Oh, oh, we know, we know! In fact, they kind of turned Venom into a bit of a laughing stock in this game. I'm not sure how I feel about that. And look out, lady! Oh my goodness! No! Oh, sorry, lady. Didn't see a thing. Nothing surprising or that interesting at all happens in the story, but it is extreme levels of fun to go through and pretty funny on occasion, both intentionally with the quips between Spidey and the bad guys, and unintentionally with shit like this. That does it! Excuse me, Spider-Man, what was that again? That does it! Gotta save Mary Jane and shit like always, you know? She needs to make sure she can survive to show the horny teenagers her voluptuous titties. At the end of the game, we even get to see Mysterio porn on the wall of the bad guy's cell. And please, somebody point me to the direction of who came up with that joke because it's totally perfect and I want to give them a big old hand job. This game has a bit of everything, but it never strays from the main mechanics, so there aren't any silly mini-games here or anything, but instead lots of different Spider-Man situations for you to solve. One second, you can be just chilling out on your way to a goal, fighting bad guys and going in a general direction. The next, you're stealthing your way around a building, trying to take out enemies strategically and slowly to stop them from shooting hostages. Then you'll be chased on the rooftops by a raging helicopter blowing up everything in its path. Then you'll be trying to keep up with Venom racing him to his hideout. Then you'll be flipping switches to change water levels in order to access different rooms underground. Then solving a brief puzzle of hitting switches to open and shut particular doors to reach Venom. Then in one of my favourite levels, you need to find Mary Jane in a sewer, but it's in a huge maze. So you discover the lizard locked in a cage who bargains with you to clear out his hideout in exchange for verbal directions to Mary Jane from his position that you have to remember. It is so fucking cool. I love the final part as well, where you need to quickly escape the Carnage Doc Ock hybrid while a building is exploding. It's oh. fast, intense, gives you tons of close calls, and it's just so much fun to conquer. Spider-Sense going off is also pretty cool, not just visually, but it does alert you to incoming projectile threats around corners and hidden passages that you can quickly web up directly above you. And the webbing itself is pretty cool as well. There's a separate button for webbing directly above or below you super fast, another separate aiming command when you need to look around or specifically choose a surface to automatically web to, and the web swinging itself acts more like a jump extender than an actual swing against a building. It makes no sense at all outdoors, and it is unexplained why you can only web twice, but I guess if you had total freedom, the game would be way too easy. It's also brilliant how if you accidentally fall off a ledge, a quick press of the swing button can save your ass as you auto lock onto the next Jesus. sticky surface to climb on, which is basically anywhere, another awesome addition to your movements. There's lots of rewards for diversions away from the general direction your compass points in some objectives. There's awesome looking temporary armor to find alongside badass web upgrades like fire, and the fire web is one of the many ways to fight. The beat em up elements are another big mechanic and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different punch and kick combos to string together and jumping slam attacks all at different damage outputs. Not forgetting, of course, the five web abilities that all work on the triangle button but correspond to different directional buttons at the same time as pressing the triangle button. Leaving the buttons alone allows a constant string of web to tangle people up or distract them for a second ready to punch. Pressing forward and webbing allows for a strong projectile weapon. Pressing right guards you into a shield for a second before exploding all around you. Holding down drags enemies towards you to stop them shooting and get you attacking immediately. And holding left gives you temporary ultra strong web fists for stronger attacks. Every single enemy has different mix and match approaches for webs, melee attacks and jump dodging and countering so it's never just a mindless button masher. And most of them can cut a quarter of your health off in one hit like the motherfuckering Symbiotes. These blobby <laughs> sticky strings of puke can shoot at you, jump around, attack fast, disappear, have tons of health and can't be tangled up. But hey, if you were looking for advice for a 17 year old game... I tap the web button to distract them, three combo them, jump out of the way to avoid their attacks and then repeat. It seems to work fine, but when you're in groups, I don't fucking know what to do. They can make some stages like the elevator one infuriating. And while on the topic of bitching, who the hell came up with the beginning of this Venom subway train survival stage? It begins and kills you instantly unless you're holding forward 
forward to land on the train in the what first the place. This isn't a glitch. I tried it multiple times, and yes, it just kills you instantly unless you move forward. I mean, it's not a massive problem, all things considered, but it's just fucking funny. <laughs> the bosses there aren't just a lovely mixed bag from the comics, but are also pretty good in my opinion, and like the enemies, all require totally different approaches. I love how Rhino can have things thrown at him, be directed into electrical points, get stuck in walls ready for punching, and be directed into exploding barrels. And yeah, this gives you a lot of options in fighting him, but he can really smack your health up. Venom is a tricky fucker that loves to go invisible, then stun you, or grab you quickly from somewhere else with his tentacles. The trick here is to catch him as he's reappearing and combo him and dodge before he has the chance to do anything back and then goes invisible again. I tried projectiles, but that really didn't stop the, yeah, hit me being grabbed by his fucking dicks. The worst boss though is Mysterio, and that's such a shame to say because conceptually he's the best boss in the whole game. In execution though, He's a load of old Christmas. And I mean the bad kinds of Christmases. You know, the ones where your great nan is a huge racist and there's cauliflower in your roast dinner. Mysterio is amazing in theory. You have a giant boss with two phases, three layers, and multiple places to shoot with your web balls. And when you're on each level, Mysterio has different attacks specific to each layer that you're on and can also summon things you need to jump over. You can coax him into attacking below you so you can quickly jump up and attack the other places. And the stage has been built like an upside down cake so you can easily jump up and down each floor by moving towards and away from the environment and not just get stuck up underneath platforms that are immediately above you. The only problem is look at the fight. What a mess. Fidgety controls in a cramped space, meaning I could never point myself towards the target, do the specific button combination for the web shoe, and turn myself around in the first place, pressing those directional buttons I needed to do all of that stuff at the same time without falling off. And there's less frames than a picture shop that's recently run out of stock with frames. The controls to do all the crime fighting with, though, are all right. They're serviceable. I mean, I've got no complaints on button layout. The auto lock works well. The camera snapping back isn't too bad. Spidey zips around nice and fast, and combos are easy to execute. I love how whenever you climb or swing around, it's really easy to just cancel out whatever you're doing with a quick jump. The main complaint I do have though is the sensitivity of the movement. Spider-Man isn't the fastest on his feet when you're in big environments, but with any kind of tap of the directional buttons or analog stick tilting on tiny platforms or cramped spaces, he goes from 0 to 100 really fast and it can get a bit fiddly. Like I said, especially in the Mysterio boss where none of the elements work together at all. And whenever you jump, there's a lot more height than distance, so get ready to be stuck on ceilings whenever you dodge enemy attacks in corridors. The levels themselves also do have many secrets inside them from the hidden armor and fire web power-ups I mentioned earlier to even actual comic book covers. An awesome way to store a load of classic images on a memory card before fast affordable internet was a thing. It also helps you unlock the many costumes in the game, not just awesome for visual differences, but also with their own power-ups to affect the game and let you revisit the levels to find comics and stuff as a god. I love the Venom outfit that never stops you from running out of webbing. So there's even the replayability along with everything else and there's even a bloody cheat menu. And we love a good cheat menu, don't we? Just make sure that you don't write fuck in the password screen. Spider-Man doesn't like it. And so, as fast as it arrived, my time with Spider-Man on PS1 has ended. And overall, it was very enjoyable, if a little bit clunky. There's absolutely no reason to go back to it nowadays, especially with the amazing looking PS4 one coming soon. And for a much better representation of Venom, just play Ultimate Spider-Man. But I need to judge it as it is, and as far as perky, precious PlayStation games go, it's alright. So it gets the salvage. Lovely. And of course, until next time, if it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Hello everybody, thanks for watching this video. The outtakes will be on in just a second, so please stay tuned. But first, I'd love to thank... Yeah, I gotta admit, this one looks way more awesome, because you got... Because, I mean, uh... Because from what I remember of the, uh... I didn't really play that far into the into the uh the ps2 spider-man game that i played like uh the only part i remember is that man you're always fighting a bunch of henchmen that's it but with this one you get more variety you get like you get all the villains from the comics rhino black cat you even get like even daredevil human torch and captain america make a cameo for some reason like in human torch like you get all of them mysterio doc Ock, venom carnage uh, uh, like it's crazy. Like, yeah, that one looks, and from the style of it, the graphics, it looks, it looks like a comic book. Like, it looks really cool. It looks like a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's all I remember from that one. Just like, oh, uh, you're going around beating up a bunch of henchmen, and they all pretty much look the same. Like, what the? Subscribe. And strangely enough, similarly. And strangely enough, similarly. And strangely enough, similarly. Similarly, similarly. 
And so as fast as... <laughs> and so as fast as it is right... And so as fa- I am not able to talk today, it's the fuck- <laughs> Uh, it's okay. You, we always have, uh... You always got one of those days, huh? <laughs> Well, it's one of those days where, like, man, you can't talk. Like, bleh, 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 bleh. Um, yeah, <sighs> yeah, that game looked more faithful to the, uh, yeah, to Spider-Man, to the Spider-Man comics, like, more than I think probably any o- any other Spider-Man game, you know. Uh, and yeah, I've seen the new one. Like, man, it looks pretty cool, and. Uh, and also, I love that Stan, uh, Stan Lee makes a cameo in that one. That was pretty cool. That's pretty cool, though. And this one, that you get freaking Stan Lee as your narrator. And <laughs> just like Caddy, too. Like, man, I want Stan Lee to be my grandpa. Like, man, I bet he'd be a cool grandpa. Like, man. Uh, yeah, and Stan Lee... Uh, he kind of like doesn't want doesn't like to admit it, but uh, Stan Lee has said that Spider Man is his favorite character because uh, he's more relatable, you know, especially to young kids, you know, kids that were seen as outcasts, nerdy, like me. I was a nerd, like, uh, yeah. And I, th- and I think that's why I like Spider Man so much, and. Uh, uh yeah i also i do like other superheroes too like batman wonder woman spider-man captain america iron man uh but yeah spider-man he'll he'll always be my favorite my most favorite uh well actually yeah spider-man is my favorite then batman i like batman too oh but i also like dr strange too (laughs) that would be like, oh my god, like, how cool would that be to just, like, uh, to just, like, open a portal and just, like, go somewhere else, go to, like, another universe? That would be awesome. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, yeah, like, nah, I think that's it. Eh. Anyway, yeah, it's my reaction to old Spider-Man PS1 by Cat Icarus. And, uh, well, everyone, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.